G'day guys, we've got a cost accounting question today where we've been given a company, Patel Manufacturing, that sells 180,000 units of its product for 25 bucks per unit in 2016. Variable costs per unit are 20 bucks and total fixed costs are 800,000. Calculate the contribution margin and operating income is the first part of our question. Okay, so to start with, let's just try and figure out what, well not figure out, let's try and discuss what contribution margin actually is. So we've got this contribution margin term. Now, the contribution margin is basically a measure of the ability of a company to cover its variable costs. So to start with, the way that I like to view contribution margin when I'm trying to calculate it is I'll calculate it as like a contribution margin per unit. And that's usually equal to the selling price minus the variable cost per unit. Okay, so in this case, if we go down to part A, so I'll put the contribution margin per unit would equal to the selling price, which is 25 bucks, minus the variable cost per unit, which is 20 bucks. and it doesn't take a calculator to work that one out, it's going to be $5 per unit. Great, but we're asked to find the total contribution margin. So basically what we then do is we just, to get the total contribution margin, we just get the contribution margin per unit and times it by the number of units that the company sells. So the contribution margin, let's say total, put a little T down there, is going to be equal to Five bucks times the volume, which is one hundred and eighty thousand, and that gives us a contribution of nine hundred grand. Cool. And we're asked to also find the operating income. All right. So again, let's go over what the operating income is. So operating income is also referred to as EBIT. Now, this is earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is operating income is our gross income or what, we, what we're gonna use, our contribution margin total, subtract our fixed costs. So in this case, we've got our operating income is equal to our contribution margin, the total one, subtract our fixed costs. Because the contribution margin, the total, already includes our total variable costs. So the variable costs sit in here. So we just have to subtract the fixed costs from it. So if we're going down here, our operating income is equal to our total contribution margin, which is 900,000. Subtract our total fixed cost. Wow. Our total fixed costs, which is 800,000. And that is equal to just, uh, well, not just, it's equal to $100,000. So, company's operating income is equal to $100,000. So that's part A done. And it's important to be able to get um, the definitions or the formulas for contribution margin and operating income, gross profit, and all these different things sort of embedded in your skull. And the only way you can do that is by just going over and over and over questions like this until you're sort of, I don't know, blue in the face. All right. So, next part, part B. I'll just separate this piece here off. Okay. Part B. Patel's current manufacturing process is labour intensive. Miss Schroeninen 
Patel's production manager, has proposed investing in state-of-the-art manufacturing equipment, which will increase the annual fixed cost to two and a half million bucks. However, the variable costs are expected to decrease to ten bucks a unit. Patel expects to maintain the same sales volumes and price next year. How would acceptance of Ms. Schroeninen's proposal affect your answers from Part A? Okay. Well, let's just go through these um, formulas again from Part A. So we're going to have the contribution margin per unit. It's going to equal our selling price, which is going to remain the same. Subtract our variable cost per unit, which is now 10 bucks. And that's going to be equal to 15 bucks per unit. So our total contribution margin is going to be equal to 15 bucks multiplied by the volume of units that we're going to sell. And that is equal to $2.7 million. Cool. Now let's have a look at our operating income. So our operating income, in this case, is equal to our contribution margin, which is $2.7 million. Subtract our fixed cost, which now have risen to $2.5 million. And we get an operating income of $200,000. Cool. So you can see that um, although the fixed costs are increasing, because the variable costs have decreased like they've been halved, with a large um, quantity of units that we're selling, we can actually make more money. So on to part C. Should Patel accept Ms. Schroeninen's proposal explain? Okay, well there are positives and negatives to accepting it. On the face of it, you should say, well, yes, um, because operating income increases by $100,000, but if we if we were using this as a real world example, if with these new fixed costs of $2.5 million, if our units that we sell drops, the operating income is going to be wiped out fairly fast, but just because of how high this fixed cost is. So if we can be sure that we're going to be able to maintain this 180,000 units of product being sold, then yes, we should definitely take on Ms. Schrodinger's proposal. However, if our um, volumes over the, if we go back and have a look at our volumes and they're looking like this, and they're all over the place, then maybe not. Maybe it's a little bit dangerous because with these fixed costs, we're going to um, eat into our operating income very, very fast. But yes, on the face of it, if we expect to have the same volume and price in a perfect world, then yes, because our operating income will increase by 100,000 bucks. So guys, with a question like this, it's not too complicated if we know what our formulas are. Just ensure that when you're doing the um, contribution margin, I, the reason I do it per unit first is I can see if it makes sense. So if I, my contribution margin, if I see that the revenues are greater than my variable costs, I should have a positive contribution margin. So I just work that out per unit first and then just multiply it by the number of units. I find that the easier and um, sort of it's less likely to make a mistake. But, you know, guys, you could do it. Um, you could find the total revenue and the total variable costs and then take one from the other and you're going to get exactly the same solution. But I hope the video helped, guys. If it did, give it a like. Um, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. But until next time, guys, um, I'll see you soon.